Welcome to the Alphagenics podcast, where every week we speak to incredible guests from the field of health, wellness, longevity, and of course, men's health. So I'm absolutely delighted today to introduce Damien, the founder of Male Mastery. Morning, Damien. Good morning, Ross. Thanks for having me on. Oh, no, absolutely delighted. Ever since we first started talking on LinkedIn, I was looking forward to this episode. So tell us and tell everyone watching, who is Damien? What is Mail Mastery and how did you get started? Um, well, again, thank you for having me on. My name is Damien King. I'm the founder of Mail Mastery, which is a coaching platform exclusively for men. I uh, host a podcast show, Mail Mastery. Um, we've also just started to venture out for a little bit of content on YouTube as well. Um, primarily, Mail Mastery is a personal development and lifestyle design platform, helping men become better men uh, financially, emotionally, uh, mentally and physically, but without a lot of the woohoo that a lot of the personal development space kind of entails. So it's kind of more your hard hitting approach to personal development. And, um, you know, I'm of the mindset that you need to get your finger out of your arse and if you're going to make life changing alterations to your life. So, yeah, that's pretty much what Mail Master is. It's the type of coaching platform that I wished I had had at certain points in my life. And I'm in a position now that I can offer that advice, offer that guidance through connecting with people like yourself, industry experts all across, um, you know, the broad spectrum of personal development, be that fitness, mindset, therapy, uh, breath work, all of that, you know, what all of that entails. So, yeah, pleased to be on the podcast and happy to get into this uh, conversation amazing yes it sounds like something that's def definitely needed and we definitely have the same shared mission really of, of making us men the best version of ourselves it's what it's all about surely yeah I, I agree totally I think that you know I speak with a lot of guests that come onto my podcast that are US based and I generally think that the UK is probably around about three to five years behind the Americans when it comes to a lot of kind of personal development mindset uh, protocols so yeah a lot of my guests that I do get on are from America or outside of the UK it is I guess what it is but I just find that they're a little bit ahead of times when it comes to kind of trends within the personal development field. Yeah, and same in medicine as well. You know, if we look if we look at TRT, you know, they're they're probably the only country that's well ahead of the UK, uh, and most other countries are sort of along the same same lines as the UK, where we're three to five years perhaps behind. Um, so, how, how did you end up in this personal development space? Have you, have you always worked in it, but moved to looking after more men, or did you have a corporate career before? What's the background? Yeah, so my background is I left school, no qualifications, left school at 15, was politely asked not to return, that typical old story. Um, I was just a little bit of a, a lovable rogue when I was at school. It wasn't a real shit, but I just had no time for education. I wanted to learn, but I didn't like the way that teachers taught. If I asked a question, they would look that I was questioning them when all I really wanted was to find out how did we get to X, Y or Z. I just like to understand and learn the process. Um, so I left school at 15, um, had a few kind of, you know, dead end jobs, just trying to get by learning life as it were. And then I got into property and done very well in property at a very young age. Um, then I started working in the city um, as an investment broker. And I suppose really the most significant time for me was actually having a chance encounter uh, with a sports psychologist. And I actually was out, I was introduced through, I think a client of a client. I started to have lunch with him. Um, we're just sitting down there talking about life. Somebody on the table next to us mentioned that she got a very poor night's sleep. I happened to mention that sleep wasn't a great thing for me. An hour and a half later, the sports psychologist, who I believe was actually Arsenal's uh, sports psychologist at the time, uh, basically put me through like an hour and 20, an hour and 25 minutes of a initial consultation. I've never told anybody or been so free and open, but obviously with what they have, they've got a way of extracting it from you. Um, and that was my first kind of venture, uh, venture into personal development. And from there, he introduced me to Tony Robbins, which is not everybody's cup of tea in the UK. But for me, his books were life changing. Awaken the Giant Within, phenomenal book, but also more from a mind mindfulness perspective, Deepak Chopra as well. So I started to get into meditation uh, and literally a week and a half, maybe two weeks later, uh, I was earning a great six figure 
salary. I mean, bear in mind, this is going back to 2004, 2005, when I was around about 24, 25. Mm -hmm. And uh, I literally walked in and and quit my job, uh, sold everything that I owned and traveled around the world for two years. Wow, that's that's amazing. Um, I'm not quite sure what to say. I mean, that must have been a really powerful initial consultation with with that gentleman there. What what came out of it? What, What was the 90 minutes about? It was just about what I wanted to achieve in life. You know, I was earning ridiculous money and it was ridiculous money for my age. Far too much money than I think somebody should have had at that particular age. But there was no purpose in life. So it was very much every Monday morning was a groundhog day. It's doing the same old shit, expecting a different result. Uh, really heavy on the client entertaining um cocaine is a big thing in the city it still is and it certainly was back then so it was kind of burning the candle from both ends but i just got to the point where it's like you go out and you buy a new range rover you go and buy a new bmw a new mercedes and a a new designer suit a new penthouse another you know how many bottles of champagne when you're sitting in the clubs in ibiza can you actually drink and enjoy And this was the thing is that I just found that there was no satisfaction. There was no, I'd be lying if I said I didn't enjoy it, Mm -hmm. but there was also a lot of regret working in the city as well. So for me, I had a great time. I learned a huge amount. I earned a huge amount, but I wanted more. And I think through having this conversation with the sports psychologist, it, it just gave me the opportunity to learn and grow. And something that I wanted to do when I was at school but I was never given the opportunity or at least the right tools to do it I think a lot of I think the teaching and education system is very archaic you can't expect to be able to get the message the same message through to 30 kids sitting in a class in the same way it just doesn't work like that anymore and I think it's massively flawed however when it comes to me actually wanting to improve myself to better myself to learn to educate myself I was just a hundred percent in and the mindfulness you know we ultimately spoke about what did I do what was my morning routine like what was my evening routine now I'm big on morning routines and evening routines but back then there was none I'd wake up probably hung over from the night before I'd get in from an evening crack open a beer tv would go on unconsciously just putting the tv on and he started to speak about outside distractions and how outside distractions while seemingly harmless can actually greatly affect our inner consciousness and can affect how we condition ourselves negative media negative press negative talk even though you aren't necessarily concentrating on it solely 100 percent you're still subconsciously taking in that information. And that's the same in today's world, be that social media, negative news or anything like that. So for me, it was learning about who I was and becoming happy with who I was. And yeah, that's that's that was the end of my corporate career. I, I was away for two years, literally traveled around the world, um, done Muay Thai, um, meditated with monks in Myanmar, done a lot of spirituality work, meditation, uh, yoga in India, and, and just had the most amazing two years. And when I come back, I decided not to go back into London, and I relocated down to Brighton and, and set up a few businesses. Amazing. Uh, whether you follow, follow Tony Robbins or whether you're following Deepak Chopra and meditating in the in the in the Middle East in in Asia, well, all of that, of course brings together is this foundational idea that you said there where you became happy with yourself and if you control your inner world the external world no longer matters Um, and those external trappings the materialistic things of the world which we all enjoy and love no longer have any control over you and you just have this sort of deeper inner calm I guess to to navigate the world and sort of what uh, I guess what you found with that with that spiritual trip around the world. Yeah, I think you've hit quite a relevant point, And that point is actually a word. And that's calmness. There was absolutely no calmness in my life. It was 100%. You know, I look back now, I'm a completely different person. I mean, obviously, I'm a lot older, I'm 44. Back then, when I was in the city, I always had because I didn't have qualifications, I didn't even have GCSEs or anything, I suppose, you've got that imposter syndrome, didn't even know it was a thing, but it can give you a little bit of anxiety. Um, You know, when are you going to get found out? 
Am I worthy of this position? Am I worthy of the money? And it was a constant alpha male type of scenario on working environment that you're always trying to prove yourself. There's a saying in sales is that you're only as good as your last month's figures. And I was an absolute animal and an asshole when it come to working in the city because I would just take absolutely no prisoners. I didn't give a shit whose tro- uh, toes I trod on. Um, I didn't give a shit what I had to do to get my figures in, but I absolutely smashed it. Uh, and I did it every company I went through. Um, and I suppose really go, when I, when I say that every company I went through, not worked for because it was a step, every company was a stepping stone for me. And I would literally use that. I was a money whore at the end of the day. I just wanted financial security, more of what I had. And yeah, the more, the better. And ultimately, I got to kind of 24, 25 and just realized, you know, there's got to be something more to life. Uh, yeah. And I think that more was inner calmness, happiness, fulfillment. And I just didn't get that from working in the city. And I know a lot of other people that do very, very well in the city that are earning ridiculous money. And none of them are happy. Yeah, absolutely. You said an, used an interesting word in there, and it was that certainty. I think a lot of people, especially men who have got that um, historic hunter-gatherer, you know, things that's sitting on our shoulder saying, you must protect the cave, you must um, provide security. So we go out, we work super hard, make as much money as possible in order to provide that certainty to ourselves and to our partners and our families but ultimately we can get that certainty from inside we get it when we're comfortable with who we are when we're happy when we seek calmness as you say or uh, as ryan holiday would say stillness that was which if you haven't read it stillness is the key but ryan holiday is an incredible book um there was a near the start of the book there's this phrase he uses which is stillness aims the archer's arrow and i was like wow when i read that Mm -hmm. before sentence I, it made so much sense in my head that moment of inner calm which allows us to do all these incredible things in the world so i totally get it i understand your journey mine wasn't quite the same but i think we've probably ended up in a similar place um, we're now helping people through health in particular and obviously you've gone down the personal development route which is amazing um so tell us more about the male mastery program how does someone enroll what does it entail is it a yeah, how, how does it work? So ultimately, Mel Mastery is the type of platform that I wished I had had when I experienced some life challenges, shall we say, because whilst my life has been full of ups and downs, I did hit a point in my life, 2015, where life didn't really go according to plan. And if I'm going to be completely honest, um, it was a very, very difficult point in my life, which we potentially will touch on later, maybe not. Um, but for me, Mail Mastery is about providing effective life advice, tips and strategies that work in real life scenarios. And I wanted to be able to reach men like me. And I found that go back 10, 15, 20 years ago, personal development kind of there was a big gray area especially in the UK uh you mentioned to some people the whole Tony Robbins thing and they're like no not really my thing he's quite American quite big quite brash and I'm like okay I understand that or you've got the other element of personal development it's that kind of woohoo spirituality um don't worry everything will be better just you know close your eyes breathe correctly and think nice things of you know birds and grass and grounding and do you know what i mean you try telling that to some flat nosed skinhead down the down the local gym uh, and I just found that there's a big grey area there. And I kind of, I'm in the middle because I'm just as happy going in and smashing somebody up in the in the octagon, in training, boxing, MMA, jiu-jitsu. But then I'll quite happily sit down there afterwards and connect with that person, sit there and meditate. You know, for me, psychedelics has been a big thing in my personal growth. And I think male mastery is for the right type of person. To sit down there and moan and sit down there and say, I wish, I hoped. It's like, look, I get that. But you need to get your finger out your ass. Take some responsibility for your own actions. Understand that you are where you are because of the decisions you've made in life. It's nobody else's fault. You're broke. 
you're rich. That's down to you. Yes, there are external factors, family money, being past money, inherited money. But ultimately, that doesn't make you happy. We understand that money isn't everything in the world. It eradicates a lot of the problems. And generally, the people that say money doesn't buy you happiness has never had any themselves or they've had a huge amount. Mm -hmm. Many successful entrepreneurs now are on the journey of being, uh, you know, uh, philanthropy and uh, trying to go and give away all of their money. But for me, Mal Mastery is about finding that balance. And the balance is fulfillment. The balance is satisfaction. Mm -hmm. It's about waking up in the morning, having a purpose and also understanding that you are the creator of your own destiny. And the way that you're day progresses is all based on your actions from the moment you wake up. And I don't like that kind of woohoo spirituality way that some of the personal development companies and platforms go. So we're, we're hard hitting, we're impactful, but it works. Yeah. yeah. You, you want to lose weight, eat less, exercise more. You want to be happy, less depressed eradicate sugar, eradicate alcohol. Life is not rocket science. Primarily, it's very, very simple. But people like to make life very complicated. Why? I suppose a lot of coaches in the personal development space are at blame there because they make a lot of the most simplest things very difficult because they want to sell somebody on a coaching package. They want to sell them on this one-to-one coaching. When at the end of the day, life isn't difficult. But you have to take responsibility for your actions. And that's what Male Master is about. It's about building better men. I, lo- I love that. I, I definitely agree. Life shouldn't be difficult. when you Because when you break down, you know, the, the fundamental building blocks, I guess, you know, we need to eat right, get good sleep, be physically active, take care of, uh, you know, protect our mental health and take care of the people around us. It's kind of it, you know, if you've got a good community, if you're loved, supported, love yourself, do the right things from a health point of view, we're we're pretty much there. But the problem is, is the modern world has evolved so quickly, it's so fast, we're constantly bombarded by phones and emails and messages and we're just being pulled in so many different directions. And then you've got big pharma, big food, the marketing behemoths all saying, you know, eat this it's healthy don't do this do this be a vegan be a carnivore like people don't know where to go yeah i think i mean the diet and the food industry is i mean that's a that's an entire podcast in its own right but i think there's enough here's the thing we're in we're living a life at the moment where there is information overload however it's up to you to decide what information you take in what information you absorb, what information you take as right or wrong. I I completely get that. The argument always is, well, is the internet a good thing or is it a bad thing? You know, you, I mean, you've got the whole OnlyFans thing. Everybody's a celebrity. Everybody's got a marketing platform. But then on the flip side, if you're working a nine to five job and you're moaning about it every single day, yet you're on Instagram, you're on YouTube all the time, it's like, well, you can make a business out of that. But you're choosing to be a consumer rather than a creator Mm -hmm. that's your fault that's your decision yeah we all all have the same amount of time in the day don't we um and you can either have a a victim mentality um i won't be successful i can't i can't make good healthy choices because of x you know i I work too hard Um, my boss isn't very nice the the government's not in politics is rubbish that there's inflation it's expensive it doesn't there's always an excuse if you're in that mindset whereas i guess what we're talking about is flipping the switch and having that ability to make good solid choices and kind of cut through a lot of that rubbish i guess yeah i think the thing is with it is for me i'm of the belief that life happens for you rather than to you And that's a mindset. Mm -hmm. I don't vote. I couldn't give a shit whether or not Labour's in power, if the Conservatives are in power, the Green Party. It makes absolutely no odds to me. I'm still going to have to pay 
the correct amount of tax. I'm still going to have to have to abide by the rules and regulations within the company rather than sit there, bitch moan and do nothing but like send out little shitty tweets and things like that about everything that's wrong. It's like, well, just just crack on. You know, I don't reside in the UK anymore. I think Western civilization, I think Europe's going to shit. For me, I can sit down there, moan about it like so many people do back at home. I think crime's going through the roof. I think um, we're losing our identity as a nation. Okay, so what do you do? Do you sit down there, do you moan about it? No, I don't. I just leave the country. You know, the world isn't such a, a big and unknown place now. It's easy just to jump off. But, you know, within 11, 12 hours, I can be the other side of the world. So for me, rather than sit down there and be, oh, I've, you know, it's, it's Monday morning, it's grey. I hate the UK weather. I find there's a very negative mentality, uh, mentality especially in the business space in the UK. Um, not with everyone. Don't get me wrong. I've got a lot of successful friends that are in business and that I just I'm talking about society in general. So I, I you know, I decided, look, I don't want to be based in any one um, particular country. So several years ago, I made a very conscious decision that all of my business interests will become location independent. I worked in media. I had my own media company, marketing agency. So I had the office in Clark and well, I had the staff. I've been involved in media, digital media, marketing, that type of thing. And I made a decision back in probably 2016, 2017, that all of my business interests will become location independent so I can base myself anywhere in the world. And that's exactly what I do now. But, do you know, a significant thing is I probably earn less money now than what I have done in a very long time. But I am the most happiest I've ever been. Yeah, I, I love that. And um, where are you in the world at the moment? You're in Thailand, is that right? Yeah. So I base myself. So I do Monday through to Thursday in Bangkok and then the weekends down in Patea. That sounds awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I think a lot of people have got a misconception. Well, no, that's true. There's a perception of Patea being the sex capital of the world. And yes, there are a lot of old men that are here for one thing or another. But when you go 15 to 20 minutes outside of Patea City, there's actually a huge health scene down here. So I'm mm -hmm. literally 500 meters from, I think, one of the best gyms in Asia, a place called Muscle Factory. Uh, I'm literally two minutes away from the beach, coffee shops two minutes away. So for me, it is perfect to be able to come away and just have weekends down here and then back to business in Bangkok. I think Bangkok's an amazing place. And yeah, I love being out here. The people are very entrepreneurial, very friendly, uh, a great network of people out here. And I work off of a laptop so I can be anywhere in the world. I mean, look, we're speaking at the moment, recording this podcast, and we can be further away from each other. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm in Northumberland and, and you're over in Thailand, which is, which yeah. is amazing. Do, do you find being out of the UK, do you find it's easier to make healthy decisions because on the one hand, I think, you know, when I'm traveling, sometimes I make poor decisions because of convenience. But then I do also find generally in other countries, it's, it's often easier to eat well because there's better quality food around. Oh, 100 percent. As soon as so I as it stands at the moment, I'll go back to the UK for two, three months over the summer. 100 percent. My training doesn't change, but I'll put on weight. And that's because I'll open the cupboards indoors and I'll sit down there and it's just, there's a lot more bread, bagels, wraps. Um, over here, I'd say in Thailand, I'm primarily, if I was to break down and I don't want to get too technical one, because it won't be of interest to the listeners. And two, I'm not technical when it comes to uh, breaking down kind of nutrition and things like that. But if you're looking at your macro breakdown, I would say that over here, I primarily am kind of, 50% protein, 30% fats, 20% carbs. My carbs are really, really low when I'm out in Thailand. And if I'm hungry and I'm looking for a snack, prime example, uh, I'll go out, I get breakfast at around about 11, 11.30 just after training. Mm -hmm. I will go and buy barbecue skewers that's cooked by an old woman on the road. Uh, that will be liver, heart, chicken thigh. I don't know, maybe a bit of fish. Mm -hmm. That's all I'll then eat, and then I'll have a second meal around about 5, 5.30. Primarily, that will consist of 80% meat. So very much a carnivore-esque diet over here, uh, and I just get in the carbs just for a little bit of energy, just for a little bit of clarity, um, and the you know muscle-building properties off of that, a little bit of an energy resource. So, yeah, I find it's 
very very much easier to eat healthier over here than what it back is in the uk because everything you look at in the uk is just a sugary snack yeah there is a lot of that and what, what about i know you're 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 a fan of meditation as am i mm. and again i find it's easier to meditate when it's nice outside because i like meditating in nature so i, I look you know i go for a walk in the morning walk the dog i do a walk in mindfulness exercise uh it's easier when it's warm outside you know and it's not chuckling down with rain so I guess there's advantages of being in Thailand for that as well. I find everything's easier and more pleasant when it's nice outside. I'll have a friend that comes over Bangkok, been a couple of times, never really enjoyed it. Come over, I showed him around. We're sitting there on a roadside stall on a plastic seat, sitting at a tin table at 10.30 on a Wednesday night. And I said to him, this was back in, I think, February. I said, what would you be doing at 10.30 on a Tuesday, Wednesday night, Back in the UK at 10.30, he went watching Netflix in bed. And we're out here because it's warm. You know, what? getting up to go to the gym, not too much of a chore when the sunshine out there and it's really nice and warm, considering to having a walk 20 minutes to the gym, get in the car, pissing down with rain, scrape off the ice from the windscreen. I've got to say, for any of you listeners out there that are thinking about maybe addressing your work-life balance, for me, moving abroad has been an absolute game changer. You don't have to come all the way to Asia, all the way to Thailand, don't get me wrong. But even if I had to do it back in Europe, I'd be in Spain or Portugal. For me, the weather, the impact it has on my mental health is very significant. Yeah, I, I don't think there's a surprise that the UK, maybe things are changing now, but you know, people of our age, we were very, very good at going to the pub. Like, you know, because it is cold outside it's wet outside it's dark and it's dark for half the year um you're not going to go to the beach and go surfing or you know or go for a run when it's easier to go to the pub with your mates um we look at you know other countries when it's warm outside it's light outside people gravitate to that outside space and i think fundamentally we still have that connection with the earth with nature we all feel better i think when we're when we're close to it even if we're not aware of it I think there is a, it's quite a strong word. I'd say a disgusting connection with alcohol. And the reason that I'd use such a word is that we live in a society where we can make an excuse to consume alcohol at any time of day. I've had a stressful day at work, go and have a beer. I've had an amazing day at work. Let's celebrate, let's go and have a beer. My friend's just had a new daughter. Let's go and celebrate. My friend's just lost his nan. Let's commiserate. Stressful, elated, let's consume alcohol. You're just elevating or trying to elevate the feeling that you're feeling. Or sometimes that feeling is enough. It doesn't need to be heightened anymore. Yeah. Live in the moment. Be aware. Be conscious. And don't try increasing everything. Serotonin, dopamine. More isn't always better you're in the TRT space. 500 milligrams a week is not necessarily better than 100 milligrams a week, depending on where you're at. Yeah. Anyone listening to this, it's never a good thing to do 500 milligrams. I was using that as an example. Um, always speak to a qualified trained professional, people. But you understand it is that sometimes you've just got to accept an experience for how it is. Some will be better than others. But enjoy it. Be in the moment. Even now, it's like, let's take a video of it. Let's look, look at this amazing piece of food. Let's grab a photo of it. Let's share that with someone. All you're trying to do is justify your existence. You're trying to show that you're better. You're as good. You're competing with other people out there. I can tell you something now. At 44 years old, I've got plenty of money. I've got plenty of assets. I'm doing well. But I could be doing financially a lot better but it isn't always about that sometimes you've just got to be appreciative of where you're currently at the people you're surrounded with because I know it's easier said than done but some of the best experiences are when you're actually present and you're enjoying it and you're feeling a mixture of emotions does that make sense a hundred percent yeah I think a lot of people are guilty of living in the past which means they gravitate towards depression or they live in the future and then anxiety becomes an issue. But when we live in the present moment and accept that 
everything that's happening it's not good or bad that, that's just our perception it just is and actually if we live in there accept it um and be mindful of it then i think happiness goes through the roof and just to add to what you said before with alcohol as well you know it's the weekend i'll have a drink well it's thursday it's almost the weekend i'll have a drink well it's monday and i'm still not recovered so i might as well have a drink um we're going on holiday you go through passport control doesn't matter if it's seven o'clock in the morning or seven o'clock at night i have a beer and, and <laughs> You know With what I mean? Yeah. Yes, exactly. I'm 100% yeah, on the same page as you there. It's it's ingrained in our society. And it, I think it does lead to a lot of problems. I've not drank now for about 18 months, um, which is the fourth time I've had a break from it and definitely feel better. Uh, I haven't said I've stopped forever. I've just I'm just not drinking at the moment. Might last forever. I don't know. But there is your power because so many people would need to identify as sober. Right. So many people need to, or they believe they need to identify as I'm an alcoholic. I hate labels. Same. For me, I hit a bad patch in life, 2015. Um, long story short, I lost everything. My, mm business my wealth my properties literally everything i lost absolutely everything and it was my fault 100 percent. there was alcohol involved there were drugs involved but ultimately it was my fault i decided to have that drink i decided to take that pill to do that line whatever it was my fault i accept it i own it but what i didn't like when i went to certain groups was the label of you're an alcoholic, you will always be an alcoholic. No, 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 no. What is empowering is I don't drink because I choose not to drink. Mm. I don't drink because I'm, you know, I enjoy life more when I'm not drinking. But to turn around and say I can never drink again, all that's going to do is make you want that drink more and more. Yeah. So I find it very dispowering when when you're saying I'm consciously making a decision that I'm not going to drink or I'm not going to eat that burger or I am going to go to the. Well, then you're in control of the situation rather than the external situation or environment controlling you. And I like the way that you worded that. But I believe you worded that consciously. Consciousness is definitely a, a big part of what we talk about um, with, with you know whether it's a gratitude diary whether it's choosing how you feel trt as you know is, is what we specialize in but it's not magic you've got to be making optimal lifestyle choices as well um got to be living an optimal life putting the right things into your body whether that's not putting social media in the news into the into up here and putting optimal food in making the right you know exercise choices sleep things and sleep choices so yeah absolutely i think conscious decision making is is super important i think again the whole thing with trt big advocate of trt first and foremost it's made significant changes to my life but people are looking for that magic pill i have struggled with calling myself a coach i prefer to use the term mentor and the reason being is that i only coach or give advice through things that I've got experience with. So if you want to build an IT business and you're going to exit for 20, 25, 30, 40 million pound, I'm not your man. Why? Because I've never achieved that in life. I can help you lose weight, get in fantastic condition, mentally, spiritually, physically. But if you want to hit 4% body fat and compete in the IBFF, I'm not your man. Why? Because I've never achieved that in life. The coaching industry in the UK is full of idiots who, when I say that, I'm speaking for the majority of people that are selling courses and made their money through selling courses. They've never actually achieved what they, I mean, there was another guy that I've been in contact with. He's helping founders achieved eight figure exits. It's like, well, when have you done that? So what makes you think you can coach somebody for that? Mal Mastery is all about what I've achieved, what I can give advice on. 
And if I don't know it, I've interviewed an industry expert that have, which is why I have the podcast, which is why I connect and have built a network of the world's leading industry experts. Um, kind of on a segue there, what were we talking about a little bit before? I think I've gone off on a tangent there. Um, well, I'm not sure we've gone up over all sorts of things there, consciousness <laughs> and conscious decisions. Yeah, yeah I, I don't know. I mean, we're, I'm sure, I'm sure we're coming back to, it. to drink, um, you know, rather than just saying you're an, al- an alcoholic or what have you. Um, I think it, a, an important thing in there as well is there are more and more labels creeping into life. And I think the intention behind it was good, um, you know, for inclusion. However, as far as I can see, it's just driving a wedge between more and more people um, and people are becoming more and more unhappy as we get more labels, whether it's labels around gender or sexuality or um, mental health problems. It's just making more tiny tribes who all hate each other, whereas we should be getting rid of all of those labels and seeing we're all one race or one set of human beings um all uniquely different but basically all the same my two pennies yeah i i completely agree with you on that again you know i had i think i I think the thing was that i was speaking about earlier was uh when it actually comes to coaching and me being more of a mentor rather than a coach and the reason that i say that is that there are i think you've got two different types of coaches you've got coaches that are coached in being a coach, protocols, platforms, procedures, exercises, or you've got somebody else that comes from it from a different way, and that's through experience of having done, seen, or been involved in what you're currently providing uh, information on. I don't have those procedures or necessarily the coaching protocols, but what I do come on in is with that more of a mentorship. And the thing that I struggled with earlier on is that, I think I expected everybody to have the same motivation, passion and drive as me. So I got frustrated when people didn't. Mm -hmm. And the more and more I was involved in the business coaching space on helping guys get seen in busy marketplaces through kind of digital marketing, conversion, sales leadership, is that I was very passionate very driven and a lot of people out there going back to what you spoke about just want the blueprint they want the shortcut the biohack how can i get what you've got in the shortest amount of time possible now look this was a thing stemming from the tony robbins era of how can i short track it how can i fast track it i understand that and there's a relevance to it but not to the degree that so many people want it now because people want there is a reason why 30 day IB for abs sells a lot better than work hard for 12 months to get a beach body. <laughs> yeah. It's, you know, how to make 10 grand overnight rather than how to work really hard for a couple of years, learn your craft and then establish 10 grand a month revenue coming in. People want the blueprint for success. They want that magic pill. Unfortunately, going back to the whole TRT thing, it doesn't work like that. You have to earn your reward. There is a reason why lottery winners are normally flat on their ass broke within five to 10 years and extremely unhappy is they haven't understood what it takes to earn that money. So then you don't have the physical and mental ability to be able to manage that money, to control the money, to enjoy the money. And that's the same with life is I was, you know, I would try to help people out that contact me and, you know, and I I could, oh, I I find it annoying to an extent because I would say to them, look, this is what, not what you need to do. This is what you could do in order to achieve X, Y, or Z. And they just completely disregard that, try to fast track it and then be like, well, that didn't work. It's like, because you didn't earn your reward. Yeah. Yeah. And that's like exactly in the TRT space. You do TRT and think you're going to get ripped with a six pack. No, if you do TRT, eat shit, get four hours night sleep, watch Netflix and think you're going to have great mental clarity. It's not the way the world works, my friend. You know that. I know that. I just wished other people would be a little bit more aware of that. You know, they yeah. sit down we're, there and they... It sounds like we're both doing our bit to try and you know elevate that. Uh, mm. To all the guys that we come across, but yeah, we, we are 100 on the same page there. You can't sit on the pe- sit on the sofa, eat pizza, uh, take testosterone, and expect to have those 30 day Ibiza abs, as, as you called it. Not at I, all. Not at all. 
What um, I, I do totally agree, by the way, about the difference between a mentor and a coach. There was a lot mm. of coaches who set up after reading a book um, and they have never done what they're trying to teach people to do. So I think it's a really important distinction. Mm. Uh, but let's get back to male mastery if, if we can for a moment. Mm. And I, I'm keen to find out how do you address masculinity in your program? Because I think this is something that is misunderstood um in the world right now i think you've got a lot of younger men in particular scared of their masculinity because it's almost been vilified it's like it's a bad thing um so how does that get or indeed does does that get covered in your program it does but in quite a blunt way and no. it's not it's not for everyone uh and my thing is and I'll be completely upfront when I say it, is quite often or not, it'll be grass out of bollocks. Be convicted in your opinion. Understand that you will continue to learn throughout life. But speak the truth. There's a lack of authenticity when you are a yes man. Women are not attracted to the nice guy. Dr. Robert Glover, amazing book. No more Mr. Nice Guy. Yeah. If you try to please everyone, you please no one. That works in life. It works in business. And you're also very inauthentic. People may listen to me and go, he's got his head up his ass. He talks about money a bit much. He talks about what is a chip. Well, I, I don't care whether or not you like me or you don't like me. I'm not trying to appeal to the masses. I'm just being me. And if you think I'm an arsehole, so be it. What you think of me has nothing to do with me. But what I do do is tell people, just be your true, authentic self. Don't try to please everybody. Please yourself and those closest around you. And sometimes that's going to upset people. You're going to lose friends. You'll have people question who you are. But deep down, all they're really doing is questioning who they are. In the UK, we have the crab in the bucket mentality. We have that tall poppy syndrome. And it's like people want to see you do well, but not better than them. Mm-hmm. Well, my understanding, my thought process when it comes to masculinity is, here's the thing. I'm out in Thailand at the moment. My girlfriend's not. I'm, a, I'm abroad full time. She's not. That's by design. I would love her to be out here with me full time, but she's got family commitments. I don't in terms of mums, dads, aunts, nephews uh, and things like that. I don't. But here's the thing. I'm dominant in my relationship, but I'm not domineering. Mm -hmm. There's a huge difference. I'm dominant, I'm assertive, and I make decisions. I don't piss around. And that is what my girlfriend finds attractive about me, is I'm confident in who I am. Am I confident in everything I do? Absolutely not. And sometimes you've got to fake it until you make it, and you will. many men will go through life doing that. But until you've grown... A set of bollocks, take responsibility for your actions. And if your actions aren't always right, at least stand by your convictions and say, look, I ballsed up. No pun intended. I fucked up. This is what it is. I've learned by that. But at the particular time, I made the decision that I thought was right. And that, yeah. for me, is, is what masculinity is about. There's a lot of the whole red pill movement, black pill, the whole kind of Andrew Tate thing that's blown up and all like that. Look, I don't like a lot of what he says, but also I like a lot of what he says. I think he's, but he's done it for a reason. Any guys out there questioning masculinity, it's not about being an alpha male or, you know, again, that's categorizing yourself. It's labeling yourself. Just be the best version of you. Be authentic, be true to yourself and stay convicted of the decisions that you make in life. If you do that, you will live more of a purposeful life with less regrets. That I can guarantee. Love that. I think the most important bit in all of that for me was this idea of sticking by your convictions. If you've made a mistake, own it. Because mm. I think you know the real positives in the, the masculine energy is in that confidence, strength logic and um, standing by your decisions you know these are things that sh we should be championing that, that we shouldn't be sort of just saying oh masculinity is bad it's toxic well the biggest one of the biggest problems with um, society nowadays is the word toxic and masculinity ever got put close together because now people are scared of it 
But actually, we should be saying, as you've said, be confident in your decision making as long as you've put the work in and you think it's the right decision. If you make a mistake, own it. Be logical in your decision making. Be quick in your decision making um, and be true to who you are. Be authentic. Um, also understand that all people have both masculine and feminine traits. And in a relationship, regardless of whether it's a, um, a, a man and a man, a woman and a man, or, or whatever whatever um, pairing you've got, there will always be a more dominant um, or a more masculine and a more feminine, regardless of whatever genders we've got there. And I think we should be embracing that but somehow it seemed, the message seems to have got lost. Called leadership. If you have no natural leader in a relationship, there's conflict. Hey, darling, what should we have for dinner tonight? I don't know, darling. What do you want? Well, whatever you want. Yeah, but I really want to please you. No, go on, you choose. You choose. Well, what, what happens? Both, both people end up hungry. Yeah. Something in the simplest term. And whether or not masculinity is whether or not that's you taking the lead or being assertive. Look, at the end of the day, forget what's happened over the last 5, 10, 12 years. Men primarily have been the dominant sex. Now, let's not go down the road with a whole kind of feminist movement or anything like that, but we have arrived, we're, at, we're in a crazy, last, the t last decade has been a crazy time for identity. I mean, look at the identity crisis, forget masculinity, forget male, female, young, old, look at the identity crisis that we have through young kids growing up now. I would hate to have children and I respect parents out there trying to lead, educate and guide their children through life because moreover masculinity, there is an identity crisis. And if people were more confident in their ability on who they are, what they want to achieve in life, people would live a lot happier, more simplistic lifestyles. So for me, it's just that masculinity is about being confident who you are, uh, being dominant in your endeavours, not domineering. And taking people along for the ride as well. It's not just about you. If you're a natural leader, fantastic. But you've got a community, a network, a crew, a brotherhood, a tribe to bring up, give guidance, give advice to, share that advice. If that is you and you're a natural leader, then you have a duty to share that information. Yeah, I, I love that. And I guess that's what you're doing with, with Male Mastery. So. Mm people are watching this and you've resonated with them how do they get in touch um how does male mastery work is there an interview process at the start is it a, a, an application do you let anybody in what, what how does it work so ultimately at the moment male mastery is you can reach male mastery uh male mastery.co.uk um we're at Mel Mastery Official on Instagram. And we've also recently launched YouTube, uh, which is, I believe, Mel Mastery. You'll just be able to get hold of us there. We do live events. I do one-to-one -one coaching um, with a very, very... And I'm not one of these people that are trying to put that price cap. Well, I, I charge 50 grand a day, so obviously I only take the elite entrepreneurs. Look, you know, if that's your thing, go for it. I had a couple of um, coaching programs on to start with, uh, people have taken out. I am looking to improve those coaching courses. So rather than sit there and still continue to sell those courses when I know improvements can be made, I've completely pulled them. Monetary wise, Mel Mastery is not where I want it to be at the moment. That's because I haven't looked to try to convert the community building process into a monetary form at the moment. So I've got business outside of Mel Mastery. I wanna build up the right community of guys you know, have got the right vision about what they want to do in life. And then we've got coaching programs coming up, which are going to be more the kind of subscription model as well. Uh, and, and that's going to be, I've, I've got something coming out about TRT protocol and how you can fully optimize that. Uh, and again, my coaching programs are not just about me. They're about everybody within my network. I don't claim to be an expert in all of these industries, but what I do do is connect and network with industry experts. So it's Mel Mastery isn't all about me. It is about mastering your outcome. And that's why I connect with people like yourself, people like Jay Campbell, Dave Lee, um, James Swanick, 
all of these people that have successfully embraced the TRT lifestyle, successfully given up alcohol, successfully designed their ideal lifestyle, that they're actually doing what they love and earning money, have built the physique, haven't used excuses to restrict themselves in life. That's what Mal Mastery is about. It is so much more. I don't know everything. You know, you've got that saying, was it a jack of all trades, master of none? Well, mm. for me to sit down there and say I'm this, I'm that, I'm that, it's not. Mal Mastery is about working with the world's leading experts, providing a one-stop platform that provides men with effective life advice, tips and strategies. And that's what we're about. Damien, that sounded incredible. I'm sure there are lots of people that are watching this that are going to be now tapping away uh, and getting in touch with you. We'll make sure all of those um, links are going to be in, in this when it goes out. Um, well, thank you very much. I've really enjoyed our conversation. and look forward to chatting to you more offline as well. I appreciate it. Thanks for listening, guys. And yeah, I hope to connect with you.